First impressions are usually lasting impressions, and they're very difficult to change once that first impression has been made. So it's, it's an absolutely critical part of, of any interview or any process when you're meeting someone new is to make the best first impression you possibly can. Most of the time, people have made an idea and have a concept about someone within the first two minutes or even less. So the way you come into an office, if you're dressed properly, if you arrive on time, if you're prepared and you have done your research about the agency that you're applying for, if you have a solid handshake, those are the things that the interviewer will remember about the person. First impressions are, are huge. I mean, if you walk through the door and you don't look the person in the eye and you don't have a good handshake, um, you don't look confident, you don't project a positive image, that's awful hard to rebound from. In this field, it's important to look professional. We are in the public eye. It's important for us to be clean cut. If you have tattoos, to keep them covered, multiple piercings, take the earrings off. You need to look professional. You really want to show energy when you come into the uh, interview. You want to be committed uh, to the engagement, uh, to the encounter. You want to make sure you show the appropriate level of uh, respect uh, to the person that you're talking to, assign value to the person that you're talking to. You want to make sure you come across very neat and very professional because those little details do make a big difference uh, when you're competing against so many other people. I believe in the past that I have made decisions relatively quickly in, into a candidate's interview as to whether or not they're going to be viable, whether or not I'm going to want to see them for a second interview, or whether I'm going to say, it was interesting, but who's next? I think practicing is extremely important before you go to an interview. Even hearing your own voice and how you articulate your ideas. It's not bad to tape your session and listen back to it. You need to be prepared, you need to practice, and you need to present well. I strongly suggest that before you come for an interview, that you take advantage of mock interviews available at the school. A lot of colleges uh, actually have placement offices that actually help people prepare for interviews, give them tips on how to present themselves. I think it's very important for students to take advantage uh, of that service to really understand what makes a good interview and uh, practice and talk to as many people as you can to prepare. Also very important is you want to pay attention and you want to be a good listener. When you're asking a question, are they talking? Are they trying to answer it before you've really asked it? Many students coming in, or because they're nervous, have the um, yep, um, like, you knows, all over the place. If you practice, if you rehearse what your strengths are, if you rehearse your questions, you're really going to limit yourself from getting stuck and, um, um, you know, um, like um, when I did the internship and like in school, I, I, I do what. You don't want to be doing that. One of the things that I could suggest is slow down when you talk and really know what you're going to say. Think about what you're going to say as you're listening and really practice doing that with somebody else. Because people make judgments about how you speak. The person who knows as much or more than I do about a particular issue is impressive. That's the person that's done their homework, by the way. The interviewer wants to know what that person can do to help the organization. And if they come in and they impress the interviewer right off the bat that the kid's done their homework. I believe that knowing a lot about the job that you're applying for, that you've done your research, is, is a step in the right direction. It makes a dramatic impact on folks who are, who are there making decisions about your career. You will impress with the more information you know uh, about that organization. Some of the interview mistakes um, we've seen in the past that are kind of almost an immediate turn off. Uh, somebody who isn't prepared that just comes in and uh, wings it and it's almost like, you know, let me come in and you know, I'll give it a shot. Arriving late, not being prepared, not having an understanding of what kind of placement they're coming in for, not knowing the name of the person coming in to be getting interviewed. It shows a lack of interest 
into um, coming into a position. The other thing that's a very big turnoff is somebody who's very negative. Uh, you know, they blame their old boss or, you know, they blame somebody else for things that didn't go quite their way. Most mistakes can be avoided if you're prepared and you do your homework. I mean, simple things like sending a thank you note, mm -hmm. I mean, that can make the difference between, uh, you know, if, if you have two finals and they're, they're both equally talented, they both have energy and enthusiasm, they're both confident, um, one chooses to take the time to send a handwritten thank you note, the other sends you a text message. I think it's so important in an interview for a person to talk from their heart because if you're interviewing for the job, you better darn well know what you're, what you're about to say. You, you need to be able to articulate the fact that I can do this job. I can do this job because, and give solid examples, real examples, real life examples of why I'm the best person for this job. It may be your only opportunity as a person interviewing to make one impression, and that impression is, I want this job.